Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel with Premium Beat, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to create an exciting top 10 countdown. I had a lot of fun creating this tutorial because there's so many ways that you can create this motion graphic asset. And essentially, we're gonna be looking at particles, mixing backgrounds together, looking at a actual countdown expression, and working with 2D motion graphics to make this entire element come together. So it doesn't matter what you're doing, there should be a variety of helpful tips in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go up to composition and click on new composition. And I'll just call it tut. And I'm using 1920 by 1080, 23 frames per second. And we'll do a duration of 15 seconds. It should be at least 10 if you're gonna actually use 10 seconds. Click OK. So the first thing we want to do is start thinking about this in a graphic design perspective. We want this to look nice, right? I mean, we don't want to put it on a you know a black background. Maybe you do, but let's go ahead and start mixing in some background. So I went ahead and found a few images online. You can, of course, Google some, or you can also download our project files. And I found a nice gradient background here for, just to add some elements in here. Let's go ahead and bring this into our timeline. We can S on keyboard for scale. And we can bring this down to kind of fit our composition. And that looks good. Okay, so we have our background. And obviously I wanna to get to the meat of the tutorial right off the start. So I'm gonna grab the textile tool and I am going to type out a, any number, it could just be one, right? Because all this is gonna come down to an expression for the actual, uh, you know, countdown to one, the 10 to one. So make sure you have your design. I'm using the typeface uh, BeatBaz Nuu for our uh, typeface. And I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger as well. And then go to the line tab and I'm gonna center that up. So I have this expression right here that I want us to copy. We're gonna put this into After Effects. So there's a link in the description if you're watching this video and this expression is on our blog at Premium Beat. And you can just go here and copy it and then just go back to After Effects and we'll open this up. We'll go to the text layer here. We'll all click the stopwatch for source text and we're gonna paste this expression into this box. So now if we run through this, boom. We have our countdown all the way down to zero. And if we, we can just cut it right when it goes to zero. So come right here and bring in the in point to this point. And that looks good. And I would even set the clock start to 11 just so you have a couple of frames here. So you have a full second with the 10 and what you can do is just move this over a little bit. And like I said, you can copy this expression. It's on our blog at Premium Beat. The link's in the description. If you're already watching this on our blog page, it should be below the video. So here's our top 10 right here. It looks really good. So I wanna go ahead and start creating more elements in here and how you can enhance this countdown look. And of course, make sure it's in the center of everything. So before we start to add amazing elements in here, let's take a look what happens. So we have 10 and then it goes to nine. The problem with this is that this is not centered. The 10 is centered, but when we get to the single digit numbers, they're not centered. So what we can do to fix this very easily is go to the last frame of the 10, hit and keyboard for position, and move over by one frame. And then make sure that this is gonna be centered up as well. So now, it's pretty much a seamless fix that you can't even tell the difference. Completely centered, no problem at all. Now that we have the base idea of this tutorial out of the way, we can start diving into all the other elements of this awesome tutorial. So I want to start creating depth in the background and I have these bokeh images in which I download. Remember, you can download the project files and I want to add these in here to create a cool background. So let's start with uh, this bokeh image, just drag it on top of your current background and we'll hit S on keyboard for scale and we'll bring this in here. And this just allows us to, you know, be creative with what we're doing, right? So go to blending mode and we'll set this to overlay and you can toggle switch to the modes until you see the blending mode. And we got another bokeh image, which I want to put on top of this. And I'm going to, of course, scale that down as well. It's nice to have some big elements in here. And then I'm going to hit, then I'm going to set the blend mode to screen. So we can get rid of that dark background. And I'm going to hit T on my keyboard for opacity and lower the opacity of this bokeh layer just by a little bit. Actually, it's about 40%. And now we have a little bit of depth in here, but we need to animate it. So let's hit P on our keyboard for position for the top bokeh layer. Let's all click the stopwatch. And let's type in wiggle, open parenthesis, 0.5, comma, 40, close parenthesis. And now we'll have this nice wiggle in here. And of course, we might need to scale this up by a little bit so we don't see the edge of the photo. And that looks good. So now we have a little bit of depth in here. 
And maybe for the other bokeh layer, what we can do is hit S on keyboard for scale, add a keyframe for it, and move it to the end of our animation, which I'll just say at 11 seconds at the end of everything. And we'll just kind of scale it up by a little bit. And this will add just maybe a little bit of parallax to it and just add more motion and depth to our entire image here. And that looks really cool. And now we can start adding more design elements to our text. And then we're gonna be looking at some 2D graphics here and also the particles, which will really make this thing pop. So let's come here and do a 2D first. Let's grab the ellipse tool. And what we wanna do is just draw a perfect circle. So you can hold down shift on your keyboard and you have a perfect circle like this. And then we'll go to the align tab. If you don't see the align tab, go up to window align and go ahead and center that up. And make sure this layer is underneath our text, of course. And hit here and keyboard for opacity and we'll lower the opacity by a touch. Actually, we'll probably let's lower the opacity to 29%. And then let's duplicate the layer by going up to edit, duplicate. And let's hit here and keyboard again. Let's raise the opacity on this layer to maybe 60%. And we'll go to effect transition and we'll add a radial wipe. And we'll add a keyframe for transition completion. We'll move forward by one second exactly. And we'll set it to 100%. And we'll hit U on keyboard to bring up the keyframes and we'll make the last keyframe an easy easy keyframe by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And that'll kind of slow it down before it comes to a complete uh, finish. And that looks good. And now what we want to do is loop this entire circle animation every second. So this is very easy to do. What we want to do is first of all, trim the end point to the you know one second here so this clip is one second long and we can keep track of the entire timeline and we'll come over here we'll duplicate this layer and we'll bring it forward to one second so basically this is not what we want to do and what we're going to want to do here is just kind of just start the animation back over as one of the circle delete the keyframes no big deal all right and then make sure the transition completion is at 100 percent Add the keyframe at the first frame there, go to the last frame, and set it to 0%. And once again, make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on your keyboard. So now, the first one kind of wipes off like this, and then the second one reveals back on. And then all we have to do here is very easy, grab both these layers, you can duplicate them, bring them forward, to kind of build a staircase like this and of course we'll run through this all the way to the end of our countdown all right and that looks really good and then of course grab all these circle layers go to layer pre-compose and we can call this layer uh, circle animate and we'll click OK perfect so now I want to take a look at particles and this is a lot of fun, but go up to layer new solid and we can call this one, I'll call it burst particles. Go to effect simulation CC particle world. Okay. So this is going to be very easy. If you don't know anything about particle systems here and you're overwhelmed, don't worry. This is a lot of fun, easy to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the physics. And we go to the gravity property and you can see all the particles are falling down because the gravity is making that happen. So click on gravity, set it to zero. All right, so now all the particles are shooting out from the center and that's exactly what we want. So I want to animate, so I want to animate the particles so only emit after each number has been transitioned on. So let's come here to the first you know, frame of the timeline, add a keyframe for the birth rate, move forward by one frame and set it down to zero. So now we scrub through this, we'll get just a few particles that burst out here to start the animation. So then hit you and your keyboard to bring, bring up the keyframes here. And right before it goes to nine or your next number, add a keyframe for it. And then move forward by one frame and set their birth rate back up to two or even more. And then move forward by one more frame and set it back down to zero. So very simply, it will just burst on with new particles at every animated point. And all you have to do from here is just copy them and go back to a second, move back one frame, paste it in there, go to three seconds, move back one frame, paste it in there, and just repeat this process. And actually you can copy all of them now and save some time. All right, awesome. And if you want to play with the particles, 
you can go into the particle layer and you can set it to any other sub, uh, object in here so like you can do a motion square I really like that one you might want to actually add more particles into that and you can do that by increasing the birth rate so you might want to really determine your birth rate before you paste all the keyframes and or you can even do what I like and you can add a cube and I think that's really interesting click off that you know that's really cool but I'm gonna keep it at line because I really liked you know the kind of the sparks or you can change the color of it by changing the birth and death color but I really like where the settings are at now and I'm not complaining about it but go ahead and add some more particles in here and we'll also add those cubes like I talked about so we'll come in here add another solid and we'll call this one cube particle go to effect simulation particle world all right, so we'll hide the original particle so we don't get overwhelmed here. And the first things first, I'm gonna set the particle type to a cube. Boom, there's our cube. We can change the color a little bit. Maybe I'll select the eyedropper tool and we'll select some of these background colors for the birth and death color. So maybe we'll do like a, a nice blue. I'm not really getting that deep rich colors hoping for, hold on. Yeah, that should be fine. I'll do like a birth color of orange or something. All right. Okay, that's fine. I'm not going to try too hard at this. So let's go into the producer layer at the top and let's set the radius X to be all the way across. Increase the radius Y and also maybe a little bit of the radius Z. And this will give us some particles here. And we'll come here to the position Y and we'll position this above pretty much our entire scene. And then what we'll need to do is move our layer forward in time so it'll be as if particles are already flying down. And then we'll come here to the physics and we'll set the gravity to, I don't know, 0 0.04, falling down nice and slow, and increase the longevity so they'll stay up a little bit longer, they won't die right away. And we'll keep it at about like four, that should be fine. That looks good. And let's go ahead and put this cube layer underneath our first bokeh layer, so we'll continue to add some more depth in here. Or if you really want, you could keep it on top of everything. It's really your choice what you want to do with that composite. I'm pretty much happy with this animation, but I want to top it off with one more wiggle effect. And I want to wiggle the entire screen here so it's not just static. So let's go to layer, new, null object. Let's parent all of our layers to the null object. And then go to the null object, hit P on keyboard, I'll click it, the keyframe at least, and type in wiggle. Open privacy, 0.5, comma, and we'll do like 30. So this will give us a little bit more wiggle and of course you might need to scale up some of the background assets just by a touch. And then the last thing we'll do is kind of complete the animation. So once the one goes away, obviously you might want to do something else. And what I want to do for our circle here is just kind of animate this out. We'll go into our animate circle here and we'll turn on the uh, transparency so we can see the background. Go to the long full length circle, hit Ask on your keyboard and also shift T to bring up opacity. Add a keyframe for both of those parameters. Move forward to 11 seconds. So you give yourself a one second animation and come here and scale this up. You actually might need to center your anchor points. So what you can do is you can hold down control on a PC or a command on the Mac and double click the pan behind tool up here at the top and I'll center the anchor point. And you can scale this up all the way like this and increase the opacity to 100. So we go back to our main comp. We have this here, and obviously it's being cut off a little bit because of the wiggle expression, so you can come here in the original comp and just fix that with a, a scale animation as well. So I'll push that up just by a touch. And before we render everything, make sure to turn on motion blur for all your layers and turn it on for your circle animate. And after a quick render, this is what we have. We have our beautiful countdown from 10 to 1. And of course, you can expand that to whatever length that you want, or you can even make it smaller, so 1 to 5. So hope you guys found this tutorial insightful and are able to take a lot of techniques away from this so you can create your own unique countdown. For more tutorials, please be sure to check out our blog. And if you're in the need for royalty-free music, we have a huge library full of great music for your projects. And once again, thank you for watching this video. And this has been Joshua Noel from premiumbeat.com.